tendency are just numbers that are used to represent patterns in data. Okay, the mean is the same thing as the average. All right, so to find the mean, um, you take the sum of the numbers. Divided by the number of numbers. Okay. So if we wanted to find the mean, um, Catherine had a lemonade stand. She made three fifty on Tuesday, four dollars on Wednesday, five dollars on Thursday, and four fifty on Friday. And we want to know what her mean daily profit was. That's her average daily profit. So we add up the the profits for each day, and we're adding up four days, and we're going to divide that by four. So this is $17 divided by four, so her average daily profit or her mean daily profit was $4.25 per day. Okay, the median it's just the middle number. Okay, so the median is literally, it's just the middle number in a set of data. And it is, it, when you put the, you have to put the numbers in numerical order from least to greatest in order to find the median. You can't just take the list as it is and say, oh, that's the middle number. They have to be in order. Um, if you don't have a middle number, you take the average of the middle two numbers. So... All right, so if you're given a set of data and you want to find the median, first we have to put the data in order. I usually cross things off as I use them so that I know that they've been taken and I don't miss anything. Okay. So if we find the middle, we count in from each side. So two and seven, three and six, five. So our middle is actually right here. I don't have a middle number in this example because there's an even number of numbers. In order for there to be a middle number, you have to have an odd number of numbers. So since I have an even number of numbers, my middle is in between three and five. So I'm actually going to take the average of three and five divide it by 2, so I get 8 divided by 2, so my median is 4. Okay. okay, the mode. Mode is the number or numbers that show up most in the list. Okay. If you have, you can have more than one number show up. Like if, for example, I have a five shows up three times and a three shows up three times and that's the most, then you have two modes. They have to tie at that point. Okay, so um, we have a table of heights and members of a college basketball team. We want to know what the mode is. So we start looking. Okay, I have... You can either just look through the data or you can put it in numerical order. Sometimes it's easier if you have it in numerical order. Let's see, I have one, 
two seventy twos. I have one, two, three seventy sixes. I have one, two, three seventy eights. Okay, and then nothing else shows up more than once. 76 and 78 both show up three times. So my modes. Oh, it shows up twice. So 79 shows up twice. Sorry, thank you. But 76 and 78 are the ones that show up the most. So those are my modes. Right. If um, you've taken five tests out of six and you want to have an average of 90 in the class, so you're trying to figure out what you need to get on the last test to get the, the grade you want. Okay, she's got 92, 96, 92, 83, and 91. And some mystery test score that we haven't gotten yet. And that's out of six tests, and we want the average to be a 90. So we're going to add up those together, and we're going to get 444 plus x over 6 is equal to 90. We multiply both sides by 6 to cancel these out. You get 444 plus x is equal to 540. And subtract 444 from both sides. And that tells us that in order to get an A in the class, Yoko would have to get a 96 on her last test. And um, these are used to describe the distribution of the data. Okay. The range is the difference between the lowest and the highest data points. <coughs> So it tells us how far the data spreads out. Okay. So if Olivia is walking to school every day and she takes 28, 15, 15, 12, and 14 minutes to walk, we want to find the range. 28 is the largest, 12 is the smallest. So her range is 16 minutes. Okay, quartiles are, they separate the data into four distinct subsets. I think about quartiles, sounds like quarter and quarters, there's four quarters in a dollar, breaks things into quarters. Okay, um, the lower quartile is the first fourth of the data. And then the upper quartile is the last fourth. So um, what we're going to do is we first, I'm going to write the steps out. So step one is arrange in order. Okay, so we have to put these numbers in numerical order. 
Uh, 14 is the smallest. Then we have 16, two 17s, and then 20, 21, 26, 28, and 29, and 35. And like I said, I just crossed them out so that I know that I've used every number and I haven't missed anything. Um, step two is you find the median. Okay, this is the second quartile. So the median is a quartile. Um, so to find the median, I'm just going to start moving in until I get to the middle. And if you look here, my middle number is going to be right here. We label that Q2 because it's a quartile. Um, your lower quartile is Q1 and your upper quartile is Q3. <coughs> but I don't have a middle number, so I have to find that. So I'm going to do 20 plus 21 divided by 2, that's 20.5. So my median is 20.5. Okay. Then basically what I've done now is I've divided this data in half. Right here, that's what quartile 2 does. So step 3 is I need to find the half of each half, or the median of each half of the data. If I look, I have five numbers. 17 is the middle number, so that's quartile one. And here I have five numbers. 28 is the middle number, so that's quartile three. And then I, you can see I've got one, two, three, four sections. So it's only three quartiles, but they separate into four sections.